yeah, patience, perseverance. Welcome to another episode of Ozfish. Dave here, let's get some. I'm out Jew fishing again. <laughs> I'm on a bit of a Jew fishing tangent at the moment. Yeah, when you're fishing, what you're always doing is you're you're always thinking about the system that you're using. Is that the uh, the best way to fish? And uh, quite often, you know, like you're looking at it, you're tweaking it, you're modifying it. And um, yeah, what, so what I've done is um, I think in the last video I was mentioning that I like to uh, have four rods out, but um, I've had a number of double hookups. You know, what I've been out doing on my own. And um, it's true that I love to have as many rods out as I can and as many live baits out as I can because they put maximum vibration to the water. But uh, just tweaking the system that I'm using in the small boat that I'm fishing uh, solo, I've come to the conclusion that uh, three rods out uh, is the best uh, for me. Um, it allows for those double hookups and that kind of thing like that. And you don't seem to get too many fish running around your other, other lines. Uh, so yeah, I've tweaked it down to, uh, to three rods, which works really good for me. Um, another thing is I've found lately is that um, with my bait jigs, yeah, I was always, I always used to cut my bait jigs down to like three droppers. But I was out fishing the other day and it was really difficult to catch bait. Um, so what I did was I just grabbed a bait jig out and um, I just rigged it up with six droppers on it. And um, what happened was immediately, um, yeah, the bait, the live bait, the yellow tail were all over those six droppers. It was unbelievable, like just creating your own little school of fish. Um, so I was catching three and four yellow tail at a time, um, which is a major advantage when you're dew fishing because um, yeah, you want to get your baits, to be able to get your baits as quick as you can. Um, now what, what happens is, you know, like when you're using multiple droppers, yeah, you, you are going to run into some problems, um, you know, like uh, with fish tangling up in your bait jigs and that. Um, so what I've done is I've decided to um, to cut it down and just fish with uh, with five droppers on my bait jigs and see how that goes over the next couple of weeks. Um, I've been cutting the, uh, the bottom one off just to give me a bit of room on the sinker. Um, but yeah, it does work fantastic with the five droppers and uh, even six droppers, you know, like um, and you do get your bait really quick. Uh, what happened today on the bait grounds was there was a heap of really big bonito and um, big salmon um, on the end of Stockton breakwater. And um, so what happened was I was catching liveys, no dramas, and then I hit a uh, big, huge bonito, hit him on the tail um, in um, on one of the uh, the bait jigs. I had two other uh, big yellow tail on. So man, I caught that fish for like about five minutes. And then um, when I got him right to the side of the boat, I busted him off. But um, yeah, so uh, five droppers, man, creating your own small uh, small bait school. <laughs> it's definitely effective, um, you know, catching live bait. It's quick and it's got a little few downsides with tangles and that, but um, I'm kind of digging it. So I've just kind of tweaked um, how I'm going to catch my yellow tail and things like that. So yeah, when you're fishing, play around what you're doing, you know, tweak it, try to improve it. Uh, that's the go. Here's a quick demo in relation to catching bait with uh, five droppers. Here we go. You're out on the end of the break order, it's a bit different to being out in the ocean. I'm actually uh, letting it hit the bottom and then uh, just jigging it like I'm on the bottom, jerking it. So yeah, I'm on the bottom, got one on, two on, the idea is to get, try to let them eat and get multiples. Then just kind of hit them and relax with them, just gently ease the rod towards you. Yeah, you'll kind of build them three at a time. There's catching your bait quick. Oh, nice. Hey guys, I get a lot of questions 
about how I rig uh, when I'm fishing for jewfish. So I just thought I'd uh, show you how I actually rig up, which is uh, pretty basic. So. Here's the uh, <clears throat> the very basic like um, rig that I'm using when I'm dew fishing um, in the Hunter River, and uh, yeah, most guys uh, use this uh, rig, a variation of it, you know, like it's very basic. So um, yeah, basically it's just a uh, a running sinker uh, down to a swivel, and of course I'm using um, like circle hooks, but um, yeah, it's pretty. Uh, pretty standard rig that a lot of guys use um, all around the country for jewfish you know like so I'll show you how I rig that up <clears throat> okay yeah so this is just like a really really basic rig and this is how I um, rig up the jewfish so um, it's just got uh, two components to it really like um, the first thing I've done is um, <clears throat> I've just taken a, uh, a cross lock snap and um, I'm just using 20 pound uh, monofilament line uh, down to a swivel it's a relatively uh, relatively short distance like that so there's component one and the second component is that like um, I've simply just taken a swivel um, tied on some fluorocarbon leader this is 50 pound black magic hard uh, fluorocarbon leader um, yeah down to a, uh, a gamagatsu circle hook this looks like it's about a uh, <coughs> an ADO uh, inline circle hook and you can see that I, yeah, like like I spoke about before I put that uh, very small uh, Dacron loop uh, on the back of the hook. That's what the cable tie goes through when I'm uh, brighter rigging my yellow tail. And of course, I've uh, tied it with a, um, a snell knot. And uh, yeah, snell knots work uh, fantastic uh, on a circle hook. And um, yeah, basically, I've got the uh, the line coming down through the back of the circle hook like that. That's what um, enables the circle hook to hook up. And I'm probably just using a trace about I don't know like maybe about a meter long like that so it's really simple now I'm just taking the main line taking that first component just threading it through the swivel what I like to use I use a lumo bead uh, I put that on next the lumo bead really just um, stops the swivel from jamming on the knot that you're going to tie and also adds a little bit of color and flash when you're dew fishing so I just simply I just whack that on and then yeah <clears throat> I just simply come down to the uh, the trace I actually love to use uh, uni knots for a lot of the fishing that I do so simple uni knot just doing an underhanded loop pinching it with a thumb and forefinger bringing the main line up and uh, yeah I'm just taking four wraps around the uni knot pulling it up wetting it pulling it down yeah, fantastic knot. Simple. And then basically, yeah, I'm just um, pulling the bead down. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just slip it over the top of the swivel. Still swings around. And what happens is the uh, the other <coughs> swivel comes down, jams on the top of that knot. I use the cross lock swivel so I can change sinker weights like that. It's the uh, cross lock snaps simply so that I can um, change different sinker weights depending on how hard the uh, the tide's running in the river um, get a lot of uh, tidal flow on the Hunter River and what I do is just another a very short length down to a swivel short length of 20 pound mono again if I get hooked up that's my breakaway so if I get snagged up hopefully that'll break before my 30 pound main line, main line. Um, I'm using the 30, 30 pound torch tube uh, mono. I all use all mono when I'm dew fishing live baiting. Yeah, it, it just um, allows me to like uh, to slip on different weights, and you can kind of see the length that I kind of like to use, which is probably all up, probably about I don't know, maybe 30 centimeters. And uh, so yeah, that's a. Uh, very basic uh, rig for um, a dew fishing in the Hunter River. So I'm uh, using circle hooks and bridle rigging the yellow tail. And um, the only reason why I use a circle hook is um, because, yeah, I'm not killing any dew fish, I'm just releasing them. So, um, yeah, that's that's why I'm using a circle hook. Uh, it doesn't hurt the fish, hooks in the corner of the mouth. And um, if I was taking fish, um, you know, like, um, yeah, I'd probably just use either a single or a double J hook rig like most good guys do, but yeah, circle looks just for 
if you want to release the fish, doesn't hurt them, you know, like. And just a quick rundown in relation to the gear that I'm using. I'm just using very basic, um, you know, like uh, gear. You know, like I was a lure fisherman for like 15, 18 years. So um, I've done a lot of live baiting uh, in the earlier days. So um, I still had a lot of this gear uh, left. So I just sort of got that out of the shed and uh, cleaned her up a little bit. And that's what I've been live baiting with. But um, yeah, I'm just basically using a, um, like a Silstar uh, crystal blue um, rod. A very basic short boat rod. <coughs> and I'm using a... Um, just a uh, a Daiwa uh, a Daiwa sea line um, overhead reel, just with the star drag system. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, when I'm dew fishing, I'm just using um, all monofilament. I think this one's like a 30 pound torture or something like that. So I use 30 pound mono. And uh, yeah, that does the job, man. You know, like and uh, they're uh, soft enough to, in the tip you know, to allow for those big head shakes of the dew. So yeah, when I'm using the circle hooks. Uh, what I'm doing is uh, I'm just leaving the rods in the rod holder, allowing the fish to, uh, to hook themselves. So basically what I'm doing is that um, I've got the ratchet on, the ratchets are really loud. And um, basically, yeah, my drag setting is sort of like, it's sort of like just under fighting drag, what I'd normally fight a, uh, a fish out. So just enough really to, um, you know, to allow that circle hook to go in and enough pressure uh, for the, for the uh, hook to uh, turn around and find the corner of the mouth and um, yeah when I'm fighting jewfish um, you know like sometimes if I need to um, I'll go up on the drag a little bit during the fight but I don't really fish with a, uh, a really heavy drag uh, when I'm fighting um, uh, jewfish really I usually like to use softer hands and a lighter drag um, just to combat the big huge lunges that uh, the jewfish those big head shakes so I don't, um, so I don't pull the hook out uh, that's that's about it and yeah the other night I was fishing uh, <clears throat> on the full moon and um, it was a uh, two metre tide and the um, the tide was absolutely just hammering in the river and one of the things that um, like uh, a problem that I did have was that um, it was running so hard that what happened was I had three rods out and even though I was using six ounce uh, snapper leads it was actually compressing uh, my spread together and I actually got some mega tangles um, which is a pain in the ass and I actually had to re-rig so uh, there's two things I'm going to do, slight adjustments I'm going to make when I'm fishing uh, on those full moon really, really, really big tides is um, I'm either going to go up to like a, um, say an, an, eight, an eight ounce or even like this is a, uh, like a 10 ounce snapper lead um, just to try to actually throw out with the rod so they're going to hold some sort of position and not sort of come together. Um, another thing I'm going to just experiment with is, uh, is simply just using a... Um, a big uh, sort of star sinker and, and see whether that um, actually works a little bit better um, as opposed to the 10 ounce snapper lead. Um, I'm not sure, time will tell, but um, yeah, that's the next thing I'm going to um, sort of uh, have a look at. And I just want to uh, show you one other rig that I'm going to start experimenting uh, with with my dew fishing. I think I uh, mentioned my mate uh, John, who I went to school with a little bit later in the video, but um, John was a fantastic dew fisherman, you know, caught all his fish in the day. And um, yeah, he rigged uh, totally different uh, to the way that um, that I'm uh, rigged fishing for jewfish and, and most guys uh, fish. So what, um, the way John um, rigged was like with a more like a paternoster rig. So what John would do is um, he liked to fish with uh, pretty heavy sinkers, and uh, yeah, so and you've got a fairly long drop between here and up to a uh, a really heavy duty three-way swivel and um, yeah he was rigging he was fishing with um, yeah two hook J hook rig and uh, like a short dropper and basically uh, that's the uh, the rig that he would use on uh, all four of the rods that um, he'd had out and John was an extremely successful Jew fisherman and caught a lot of fish uh, so there's a couple of different ways to catch Jew you know like that uh, but yeah there's that sort of like uh, paternoster rig down to a short dropper you just whack your live bait on there and um, yeah basically you just hit the fish in strike and I guess what you're relying on here is that um, the yellow tail is just uh, swimming around see how you get up a little bit in the uh, off the bottom with this rig and John said you get uh, less stingrays get a really good uh, hook up rate and uh, yeah that live bait is kind of like swinging or swimming around about you know almost like a meter up off the bottom there uh, where the fish the jewfish are sort of a little bit up higher off the bottom there like that and uh, yeah that uh, live bait is just uh, struggling away 
uh, on that rig and uh, mate they just swim up and just hit it like a freight train and they would just smash him in the rod holder so I'm going to start experimenting with that rig uh, next week and um, see how I go um, 10 ounce snapper lead so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this rod out and I'm going to put it in pretty short um, off the back of the boat and um, interestingly enough John told me too that he used to use sometimes two dropper rigs like a paternoster rig and he'd have double tenos and he'd use the biggest live baits that he could get and he'd throw that out like in short off the boat and use that as almost like a teaser. Um, I'm using a pretty heavy outfit here like a, a TLD uh, 30 and I'm actually rigged with 50 pound line uh, down to a, uh, a lighter game rod but it's got enough in the tip and uh, I'm just using that because that's the only thing I had left to rig it up on but um, yeah John fished uh, pretty heavy like that but man belted a lot of fish with the uh, Paternoster rig so I'm going to give that a go. <clears throat> yeah that's why I like to bridle rig my liveys as well because like um, bridle rig the circle hook is just like incredibly exposed you know like uh, it's, it's not going to any flesh on the fish no nothing it's just sitting there on its own man you know like and um, yeah that's why it's such a good hookup rate like that yeah <clears throat> still waiting still waiting no dew fish you know yeah you got to keep an eye on them live baits you know when you're dew fishing because uh, yeah the brim here mate <laughs> They'll annihilate you right down the back of the head. Well, I've hit, hit something there. All of my live baits were freaking out. Even that live bait there is still freaking out. Must have been a school, a big tailor that, you know, like just went through and um, yeah, harassed me live baits. I'm just going to get this tail and I'm going to whop him off behind the head fresh and throw him out and see what happens. I've actually bought a thermos of coffee with me today, so uh, I don't usually do that, but uh, in a little boat, it's the little things that uh, keep you going. Let's not give up. Still waiting, still waiting, no dew fish, you know. Big ships come in and out the harbour, you know, like spin you around on the anchor. Well, we've hit something here. Ooh, could be a shark. Whatever he is, he's going hard. Straight down. Oh, I reckon a stingray. Oh yeah, baby. Nice stingray. When you get a stingray, you want to get them in the mouth, yeah, so you don't hurt them. Anyway, let's get her back. Again, there's the uh, the beauty of the circle hook, you know, like hit that stingray right in the corner of the mouth and uh, yeah, you don't hurt them too much. So, I don't um, worry about barometric pressure, you know, like um, barometric pressure doesn't affect fish in any way. Um, it's really interesting actually if you look at the um, scientific scientific research in relation to barometric pressure in fish, it doesn't seem to um, you know, affect fish at all, it's kind of like just really a myth really. Um, also, like, um, I don't worry about uh, about tides uh, when I'm dew fishing, and I don't really worry about uh, moon phase um, or anything uh, anything like that. And um, it doesn't really matter whether you're fishing in the daytime. You know, you'll catch dew. Um, it doesn't really matter whether you want to uh, come out and uh, fish all night. You'll catch dew in the night time. I had a friend I went to school with, and uh, he was an absolutely epic uh, dew fisherman, live bait for dew fish. And uh, John never fished in the night at all. He used to say to me, nah, mate, I just had times for drinking beers. But um, So what he did was that um, he did all his dew fishing um, through the day. And John caught, you know, like hundreds of dew fish, you know, good fish. And um, yeah, he would just fish at all different times um, throughout the day. So, um, you know, you can catch them at, you know, in the morning, you can catch them in the middle of the day, the afternoon, early afternoon, late afternoon, you know, like it, uh, it doesn't really matter, you know, like, um, Dew fishing is really just about perseverance, patience, and it's kind of like put the time in. There's a lot of myths in relation to dew fishing. Um, I think one of the, these are just my opinions of course, but one of the biggest myths you hear guys, and a lot of guys talk about, you know, like, uh, is the dew like a really lazy fish? And they just kind of like lay up and, you know, like they sort of wait for the, um, for the bait to come in and they hide in the hole and that kind of thing like that. But um, in reality, um, what a dew fish is, is um, 
Jewfish is an absolute like apex predator uh, in the river system. And um, yeah, he's on the hunt. And you know, like um, all the Jew you catch are in phenomenal um, condition. And um, yeah, yeah, they're, they're like I've seen them actually like, launching, big fish launching out of the water, um, like dolphins, you know, like chasing mullet and all that sort of stuff like that. I've had Jew, um, when I've fish, been fishing with lures in a flood, I've had Jew uh, leap completely out of the water like a mile and, and hit me lures like that. Um, I've seen fish over and over and over just chopping into um, bait schools throughout my life, you know, growing up, just like Chopper Taylor um, or Benito or Mac Tuna, you know, they're just like really incredible, like, um, you know, like, um, you know, hunters uh, in the river. And, um, you know, like it's like when I'm fishing, you know, like I'm just fishing these areas, you know, I've got, um, you know, live baits out and, um, yeah, I've caught them in, um, you know, all different stages of the tide, you know, like, um, yeah, I've caught them with the tide boring in and out. I've caught them, you know, like um, an hour before, an hour and a half after the tide. I've caught them on the turn of the tide. Um, you just never really know when you're going to sort of hit a fish. They're just, they're sort of cruising around. They're sort of travelling um, up and down the uh, the system, you know, like, um, yeah, sometimes they're living in the wharves and on the rock walls. Sometimes when you've got your liveys out, you know, like, I think their lateral lines are really powerful and, um, What'll happen is, you know, like, um, they'll kind of come out to investigate, is that something to eat? And, um, yeah, they'll just kind of, like, smash it like that. So, uh, yeah, that's my uh, <laughs> two cents worth in relation to dew fishing.